for the direct memory access is to save the time that we are spending, that CPU is spending in copying the device, the data that it, it wants to read, copying the command for that or copying the data that it wants to write from the memory to the register of the device. Before even device could start its IO operation, it needs the data in the register, in the data register, right? The time that CPU spends to get the data there that could it be saved that's the idea behind direct memory access dma if you have already heard of it anyway many of the storage system concepts we always talk in acronyms so people might not know the full form but as soon as somebody says dma then go, yeah dma i know dma I have, I have heard dma at least that would be the reaction so for large data this brings us to the second problem where we had if you remember going back we had the problem of programmable io we had one problem as polling which we solved by using interrupt which didn't solve 100 percent all the issues but then we saw some another smart approaches of tackling that and then the second problem of programmable IO is large data size. So what do we do with that? Solution to that is DMA. So for large data, CPU spends time in copying it to disk. I would say that the disk resistors word by word, word is the largest granularity or the granularity at which CPU is working before IO on device would begin. So now again, talking in, in terms of the simplistic diagram that we were that we just had before. In the example, we had CPU working on something. In reality, after we after CPU needs some data, it wouldn't be able to uh, the, the disk wouldn't be able to work on the data as soon, but rather in reality, we have few cycles. We could call it as maybe stall cycles, but it's not exactly stall. Let's call it as copy cycles. So where CPU is busy copying data from memory into the disk resistors. So CP cycles, which stands for copy cycles. Once the data is in resistor, then disk can start working on that. So then disk have this, and even if you're using uh, interrupts, then CPU is free to work on something else during this three cycles, and then it comes back to this. But note that here we still wasted this two copy cycles. Now, is there a way for us to save this copy cycles as well to make it more cost efficient? Yes, by using DM. So if we use DMA, how the same process would look like is we have CPU, we have DMA, and then we have disk. So CPU would be working on these things. Then DMA is this very specific device within the system that can orchestrate transfers between devices and the main memory without much involvement of CPU. And thus, this DMA would be able to handle this copy. And while DMA is working on this copy, CPU is independent to go and start working on other process. After DMA is done working on this copy, then um, the data is available in the disk register. So disk will be working on that IO. 
once the disk is ready, then it would raise an interrupt and CPU would come back and start working on that. So here, rather than wasting these two cycles, we have made purposeful use of that two cycles towards an another process by using DNA. I would repeat the definition of DNA is what does it do it is it's a very specific device within a system that can orchestrate transfers between devices memory without much CPU intervention. <laughs> 